How does Duolingo create these super satisfying button presses in pure CSS? I recreated them in Builder.io, and let me show you how and what the code looks like. So the first key part is you need a box shadow on your button that's six pixels offset Y and has no blur to it. And then when it's pressed, you want no shadow. In CSS, that looks something like this. The press state uses the active pseudo selector. But then you hit a problem. These don't feel like they're being pressed. It feels kind of funky. That's because there's one other missing piece. What we want is we want to offset the button down when it's pressed, so it feels like we're pushing it down. To do that, we need to translate it on the y-axis down six pixels, or however large that shadow is. That way, when we press these buttons, ah, it feels like I'm really pressing a physical button, and it feels snappy and great, because it's just CSS and it responds instantly. So the translate y on press is what gives us that. When you add in all the other styling, your full code might look something like this, where we've also got our padding, our border radius, and colors. But I didn't bother with any of that. I recreated this in Builder.io with just one prompt. You may have found with AI tools, nuanced interactions are pretty hard to prompt effectively. So here's what I do. I like to use a storyboard format, where I show multiple variations to be clear about what I want. This is a lot like you'd hand off from a designer to a developer, but we're handing from a design to AI. So here I'm showing the default hover and press states, and I added these dotted lines to make clear when it's pressed, the button is actually offsetting down. Then in builder.io, I just paste that reference image and say, build me these Duolingo buttons. From in here, I can adjust anything I want and do some pretty rapid exploration. Like I can say, add a transition to the pressed animation, and I can feel how that changes things. Ooh, yeah, I like that transition. I find giving AI visuals in like a storyboard format with annotations to be highly effective. You can also use visuals like this to upload to the AI too. These can be super handy and helpful. Again, the rule of thumb is if a human wouldn't understand exactly what you're asking, AI probably won't either. So how can we explain visually to a human? Let's use that to explain to the AI. And the cool part about using builder.io is it actually connects to your GitHub or whatever Git provider you have. And when you create things you like, you can just send a pull request to your team and your edits and new components can be merged into the production code base. Internally, we actually have our designers mostly owning, managing, and editing these nuanced interactions. Okay, we literally edit builder.io in builder.io. Our designers can customize anything and send pull requests to the devs. We get awesome UX improvement pull requests daily from our designers that are well formatted. And if we have any feedback, we can just tag the builder.io bot, have it address, and then merge when everything looks good. Try it out some time. Let me know your feedback.